Today, we are again excited to introduce Novellos, I'm sorry, Novellis to you, um, who is a great manufacturer and recycler of aluminum. So Chris Keller is a plant manager, also a Marine Corps veteran, who's going to begin with us today. Chris, thank you. And I turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, at, here with me, uh, I do have Tom Ham. He's uh, a, my HR manager. He'll help me answer questions, especially when it comes to HR. Uh, he's sitting next to me. He's Maybe. Not, on, not on screen, but uh, we're going to go through my journey, uh, culture and purpose, and a little bit about Novellus, and you know, talk about career opportunities and Q and A. So, next slide here. So, me. That was me 20 or I don't know, 30 years ago, maybe 30, 32 30. years ago. Oh, man, um, I was born in Coshocton, Ohio. It's a little town uh, northeast of Columbus, Ohio, uh, about 12,000 people raised in Coshocton. Uh, back in uh, 1990, I joined the Marine Corps, uh, went through the Cleveland MEPS station. I served about four years. I actually uh, discharged a little short of four years, um, just a little bit early coming out of uh, from there. I was stationed at, uh, started my uh, journey at Paris Island, as a lot of Marines do. Uh, went to Camp Geiger there near Camp Lejeune uh, for infantry school. Uh, did MOS, MOS school at Camp Lejeune and then was stationed uh, the rest of my tour uh, at Cherry Point uh, with a Marine Air Control Squadron uh, there on site. I, I was a habitual volunteer. So, um, you know, one of the things my dad, my dad was a veteran and I'll talk a little more later about that, but my dad was a veteran, an army veteran. And he said, whatever you do, don't volunteer for anything. And I just happened to uh, always, it always seemed like when I vol volunteered for something, uh, it ended up better for me. And I did it with a little bit of understanding of what, what I was getting into. Not all the time, but sometimes. So uh, my first volunteer, I actually was a more of a selfless thing. Um, it was the beginning of the Desert Storm, Desert Shield uh, time frame. Um, I had the opportunity. Uh, one of my friends actually was uh, asked to be a casualty replacement. Uh, Marine Corps was putting together casualty replacement platoons, uh, anticipating some casualties. Um, I took one of that one of them one of them spots for a friend of mine. Ended up in uh, Jabal, Saudi Arabia. Uh, I got there, got bored, uh, doing some desert training and some um, other things. Uh, opportunity came up and I uh, put my hand up. I ended up uh, unloading ships on the, at the port of Jabal. Uh, while I was there, I had another opportunity to volunteer out of that. And I ended up working for a battle assessment team out of uh, Quantico, Virginia. They basically were doing bomb damage assessment and battlefield assessment during the uh, air and ground phases of Desert Storm. Uh, after that, ended up back at Cherry Point. I volunteered some more and did a work party. Uh, learned how to do insulation replacement in, a, in the barracks. I also did a little stint on a commercial ship, checking containers every day as we shipped some stuff overseas. I was the only Marine on the ship. So it kind of worked out really nice for me. I read a lot, got to fish um, on occasion, spent some time on some ports, which was fun. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a loner. And he, at some time, sometimes anyway, so it was kind of a fun tour for me. Next slide. So why I served, um, you know, I graduated high school, went to college to play football. I spent my freshman and sophomore year playing football, ended up getting hurt uh, my sophomore year and 
in that time frame, I got married. Uh, my 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 wife was expecting a child, uh, our first child, and uh, I kind of you know I said life happened, and I went to uh, join the military. It seemed like a opportunity for me. Uh, why did I do it? My father, uncles, grandfather all served different branches, Army, Navy. Uh, no, no other Marines in my family, but me, but uh, several in the Army, several in the Navy. Uh, and I actually went to the recruiting station in uh, Alliance, Ohio. My plan was to join the Air Force. I walked into the recruiting station and the only recruiter that was sitting there was uh, the Marine Corps recruiter. And I walked in and I, he goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm uh, gonna join the Air Force. He goes, have you ever seen their uniforms? And then took me in his office and sold me on the Marine Corps. And uh, so, you know, the reason I joined really, uh, my father was a pastor. Um, you know, I think service to others is the highest calling. And, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, just raised that way uh, where, you know, had the military background, family, and, you know, it was a way to, for me to serve at the same time as, you know, learning, learning a little bit of something and uh, getting some discipline and seeing some of the world. Next slide. So why I left, I had a long, or I had, you know, had a young family uh, and my second daughter was uh, born while I was in the Marine Corps. Um, and at that point I was kind of, you know, I think I think I said, you know, a lot of times, I spent a lot of time deployed. I did volunteer myself into those deployments a lot of times, but, um, you know, if I wasn't married and didn't have a family at the time, I think I would have stayed. Uh, and it just came down to that whole decision. Uh, I, was, I was also ready to finish college. I spent two years in college, didn't really, you know, I didn't go to college to learn really anything. I went to, went to college to play football. And, you know, not the greatest reason to go to college. So at that point, I was ready to finish college, begin a career. Uh, when, once I got out, I went to school by day. I bartended by night. I worked a full-time job, uh, went to school all day, and then bartended at night. I had a great time uh, learning organic chemistry, uh, some other classes that my uh, patrons there at the bar would actually hold up flashcards and help me learn on a daily basis and get ready for tests. Uh, at which point after that, I uh, took a job at an aluminum mill, which was down the road about an hour from where I lived in Coshocton. And it was at the Yerkesville, Ohio facility, uh, Novellis' Yerkesville, Ohio facility as a metallurgical lab technician. So I had a good science basis. And I also, you know, from my, from my school, and uh, a little bit of understanding and working with people, bartending, and then obviously my military background helped me from that standpoint. You can see my daughter, me and my daughter at a wedding, you know, and see that. Ended up going to school at Wheeling University. And the little contraption that's there in the corner uh, is a tensile tester. That's what I ended up doing uh, 12 hours a day uh, on a three off, three off schedule. So next slide. As I said, I graduated from Wheeling Jesuit University, uh, BA in organization, organizational leadership and development. Uh, the backstory to that is um, I went to school when I got out of the Marine Corps, went to finish school, uh, was planning to be a dentist, didn't get into dental school. And I started working and uh, finished my degree with uh, Wheeling Jesuit and just really wanted to get my degree while I was doing that. Um, I started working at Novellus as a lab technician in 98, um, testing aluminum chemistry and mechanical properties. I earned a Six Sigma Green Belt certification while I was in, while I was there. Uh, you know, worked my way up from the floor. I mean, the lab technician job was an entry level position. Uh, spent three years doing that. Uh, took the leap as a quality engineer and, you know, by my last uh, five years, four or five years, I was uh, the technical manager leading a 
the uh, quality and process process quality and uh, product quality department. From there, I kind of wanted to uh, get some more experience. Uh, went to the corporate office in Cleveland, uh, worked in Market Intel, did that for about two years. Uh, worked at our Lewisport, Kentucky mill, uh, spent about a year and a half, two years there in operations leadership, uh, then went back to the technical realm, uh, went to the Oswego, New York plant, uh, Novellus is no Oswego, New, New York plant, spent a couple of years there, uh, learning about clad aluminum products and heat exchanger products. And then, uh, after that went back to, uh, Went to Asheville, Ohio, came back to Ohio uh, near home. Uh, took first two years there, Did uh, was technical manager, leading quality department. And then since then, since 2016, uh, up until now, I'm still uh, the plant manager. So Surprises in the transition. Um, you know, I really didn't know how much of the military training and the discipline and you know what i learned in the military would help me and i was really uh real it's really nice to know that you know our hr departments are looking for that they're looking for that experience they're looking for that discipline that military service brings they're looking for that teamwork that military service brings so i really didn't understand how much that would help me and it definitely has uh help considerably. Uh, you know, as I said, going to a team environment where everybody, you know, I think, you know, that's a little bit different. Um, you know, in the military, you're dependent on everybody. Everybody's working towards the same goal. Um, you got to understand as you're transitioning, you know, you have to be self-reliant, but you also bring that teamwork to the table. And then, um, you know, the number of opportunities in the private, private sector, um, there's a lot you bring to the table. Um, there's a lot that you bring to the table that organizations want. Um, organizations really don't understand, um, you know, structure a lot of times and uh, your, your background in the military really brings that to the table. And it's something that, um, you know, employers really want to see and it's something you bring to the table that's special that uh you know you really need to sell uh as you're as you're transitioning into the workforce and then uh this one was so me uh i i i as you you know you you saw in my background took multiple jobs uh and really with uh novellus working my way up uh i I really didn't know uh, what was what was uh, negotiable. You know, you never know unless you ask. And I think as I've gone through my career, uh, just know going in, there's a lot of things that are negotiable. Um, you know, some things aren't, and some things depend on. You know, we've got a lot of union facilities that there's things that aren't negotiable, uh, but there's also a lot of jobs out there where you know vacation is negotiable. You're hours you work are negotiable. There's a lot of opportunity today, especially. Uh, just know that going in. And if you don't ask, you don't know. So don't assume that, you know, they're giving you the best offer. Don't assume that, you know, the hours that they're saying is, you know, off the table. You know, there's not negotiation in that. Or don't assume that the, the vacation they're offering is uh, exactly what, you're capable of getting. So it's a, it's a just really, you really don't know what's, what is negotiable unless you ask. And, you know, typically they're going to tell you, well, that's not negotiable or they'll tell you, Hey, this isn't, but this is, but understand that that is uh, something that's, I wasn't used to. I just took what I was offered in a couple of instances and learned the hard way. Uh, wish somebody would have told me that going in. <laughs> And then um, the industry you choose can impact your life. Um, you know, know where you're going. I, 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 I'm going to sell you the aluminum industry. 
we're on we're in un you know unheard of times right now for the uh, aluminum industry. There's so many things going on. There's a it's a great time to be in the aluminum industry in North America. Uh, our president told me a story a couple weeks ago uh, when we were I was in Atlanta. He said he was in a meeting in '92 talking about you know young guys in the uh, aluminum industry and telling them, hey, you're going to have jobs, you know, through through your entire career, but it's not going to be in the U.S. It's going to be off. So you're, you're going to have to move. You're going to have to move out of the country because manufacturing is going to go out of the country. Manufacturing's in the country. Uh, the need for manufacturing within North America is huge. Uh, there's a ton of investment going on. I mean, I, I live in Columbus. They just announced a new chip factory north side of town. Uh, they're, they're bringing all the offshoring that's happened is coming back to North America. It's a great time to be in manufacturing in, you know, in the industries, regardless of what it is. Uh, but, you know, understand what industry you're going into and what the future looks like. And the future is very bright and aluminum. Uh, this is a little video and it uh, tells a little bit about uh, novellus and our purpose. What's your alarm clock? What gets you rolling? At Novellus, we understand that each day is the start of something new, something novel. With each day and each small act, we make a big impact. It's a chance to come together and care together to conquer new frontiers, to take whatever we can dream up and turn it into something real, something that can shape the future. When we look toward the horizon, we see everything we're working to preserve. Our great big round world, spinning, rolling, moving forward. And we're going to improve it. Working together with our partners, we supply the inspiration to invent, the means to move, and the material to shape a more sustainable world. We pioneer, provide, and protect. Each of us doing our part to sustain the whole. Knowing that each small step we take helps the world move forward. That's why we extend capabilities and extend a hand. Why we shape new approaches, new innovations, new inspirations that will sustain our company and the planet for generations to come. Why we work together, passing the knowledge, the smiles, the heart, the soul, and the torch around the world. From every small part to the big picture, from sun up to sundown to sun up, we shape what's next for those who come next. So uh, that's a little bit about us. Uh, it's a great, great Novellus hype video. I like it. Uh, it was shown, it was something I saw uh, during a leadership uh, conference we had and it still has, gives you chills. So a um, little bit about who Novellus is. We've got locations in, you know, all around the world, uh, North America, South America, Europe, um, Asia, uh, world's largest recycler of aluminum. That says something, and especially in these days. Um, shipments of 3.6 uh, 
thousand KT, uh, just under fifteen thousand employees. We're the world's largest producer of rolled aluminum sheet products in the world. You know, uh, it, you almost can't touch an aluminum piece of aluminum and not touch some Novellus aluminum. Uh, revenues about twelve point three billion. Next slide. Uh, what sets us apart? Uh, quality, service, and innovation. Uh, really focused on being um, a customer's choice. Um, the one that is huge for us is recycling and sustainability leadership. We are taking leadership role uh, as a company uh, worldwide in recycling and sustainability. Uh, we've released our uh, 2050 goals. We're working hard toward those. Those are part of our daily lives and what we, the metrics we follow uh, what we call our focus five. And we have a global footprint where, like I said, in North America, South America, Asia, uh, and Europe. Customer base, uh, as I said, you can't touch a piece of aluminum, uh, beverage cans, uh, Coca-Cola, Crown, Can Pack, Ball, all the big guys. Uh, from an automotive standpoint, uh, Ford, Chrysler, uh, Fiat Chrysler, Mercedes, uh, Hyundai, Land Rover, Jaguar, you name it, Toyota, GM. Uh, if it's aluminum, it's probably from Novellus. From an aerospace standpoint, Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, Embraer. Uh, I don't know that there's any. It, it, I don't know if there's any other manufacturers. So touching all that and then specialties uh, samsung denso active lg and our north american presence um you know you can see pretty much uh east coast and midwest uh one one location out uh research facility out in spokane washington uh, but rolling mills, finishing mills uh, throughout, uh, some in the Midwest, uh, as far west as, uh, you know, you got Terre Haute, Davenport, Iowa, uh, up in the Chicago, Lincolnshire, Illinois, uh, Guthrie, Kentucky, Berea, Logan, uh, you know, a couple, three facilities in Ohio, Warren, uh, a research facility up in Novi, supporting the automotive group, um, automotive industry. You got a Swigo up in New York. Uh, you know, a uh, little mill makes foil down out in Clayton, New Jersey. A uh, couple uh, facilities, finishing facilities in uh, Fairmont, West Virginia and Buchanan, West Virginia, about a mile or about a hour apart, I think. Uh, a mill down at the, the only mill in the world like it in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, some recycle facilities and casting operations in uh, Greensboro, Georgia, and then uh, one of the most uh, impressive uh, research facilities I've ever seen in Kennesaw, Georgia. And then, you know, the, the, one of the great things about Novellus is a culture. Uh, I, I had the pleasure uh, of, I guess, joining Alaris, uh, leaving, or joining Novellus, leaving Novellus and coming back to Novellus through an acquisition. And the culture within the company is just second to none. Um, our culture, cultural values are really do it right, say anything, uh, own it, get focused, when together. The say anything uh, is one of, the, one of the ones that I really focus on with my team. Uh, you know, we're really big on diversity inclusion, and that means having a voice, you know, and having our folks uh, be able to speak up, be able to feel like they can say anything and have the trust of our leadership to be heard. And that's one of the things we focus on as a team. Uh, it's one of the better things that we do. Um, you know, the own it, own it, that, you know, if you got a military background, you know what own it means. 
uh, the wind together, you know what that means. Uh, you know, try to cross boundaries, ensure that we succeed. We know what the mission is. We, we go after that mission and we don't stop until we achieve it. <laughs> but a great culture within Novellus. Next slide. And then what are our opportunities? Operations, uh, you know, I'm an operations plant manager. Uh, obviously we've got operate, operators. Uh, we, the, you know, when, when we think about operations or typical operators, I mean, our guys are running uh, multi-million dollar state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, a lot of it's sitting in a control room, making sure you're watching KPIs and watching, watching the material run through the line make, you know, doing setups, uh, controlling temperatures in ovens, thermal profiles, things like that, applying paint, uh, heat treatment, lots of things that, like that. Uh, facilities technicians, uh, we've got uh, multi, multi-craft technicians that are electricians and mechanics and machinists all in one, uh, some specialized, uh, technicians like that from uh, mechanics, mill rights, electrical technicians, um, reliability technicians was one of the bigger things that uh, you know I, I know is just huge from a military standpoint. Um, that you know making sure you know looking at condition based monitoring rather than just run it till it fails, things like that. Uh, automation. Uh, huge investments within Novellus on automation. We've got the facility in Guthrie that has no fork trucks. Uh, you know, one of the great facilities there, uh, Greenfield site that's uh, had their grand opening there this year or last year. Um, and, you know, really nice facility. From an engineering standpoint, all the disciplines, uh, real focus on process engineers, automation engineers, obviously, uh, Lots of focus on the, uh, you know, electrical, mechanical, all your normal disciplines. Uh, from a functional standpoint, we've got IT, HR, finance, uh, supply chain. That's a big military. A lot of, lot of supply chain uh, folks in the military. At least my experience was, was there was a lot of, a lot of stuff there. Procurement, recycling, it, it, it all transfers. There's a lot of things that just transfer directly. but lots of opportunities. Next slide. And this one's a good one, how to apply. And, you know, just visit the website, uh, email us. Uh, there's a ton of locations, as I said, and it's real searchable. It's a great site. Uh, go out to the sites, find it. Uh, I'm hiring right now. I've got, uh, you know, in, Near, I'm in near Columbus, Ohio. So uh, if you're heading this direction, uh, great opportunities at Asheville facility, uh, huge investment in that facility, and uh, you know we've got we've got plenty of need that we'd like to fill. So and and I think my peers uh, throughout North America are all in the same same boat I'm in, and it it goes across the board uh, from operators, technicians to uh, engineering, IT. Um, lots of opportunities. And now we're uh, open for questions. This is where I'm gonna ask Tom if I get stuck. Thanks, Chris. Yep, like you said, this is your opportunity now. If you wanna come on camera and raise those hands and you can ask whatever reasonable questions you would like. <laughs> and while we're waiting on that, Chris, I had a question. Um, actually, as I was looking kind of at your uh, career through Novellus, and you had several different moves, and while you were still kind of in, you know, the region of Ohio and Kentucky and whatnot, um, I assume that that required you and your family to move, like to physically move home. And in that situation, did the company cover or help cover those costs and help you move? Or is that something that would have been your responsibility? No, it's, uh, you know, generally I was asked to move and it was a, uh, 
you know, it's, it, there's great relocation packages. Yeah, we're not uh, relocation package. And we do we do a great job of moving our employees. Uh, if they do have, we do ask them to move or they do want to move. Uh, there's an opportunity to use the uh, relocation packages, and they're great. Uh, they are great packages, and I've, I've as as you could see, I've used them several times. So, <laughs> but uh, make it very convenient. It's really. Uh, the one thing I will say about that, the relocation package is very similar to some of the transition services that you're offered as you're, you know, leaving the military. A lot of similarities, some some differences, but there's a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, it's very similar to making moves uh, within the military as well. All right, Flynn, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Uh, I think I'm gonna go first. Uh, my question has to do with like experience. You know, a lot of companies when people are coming from out of military, a lot of company when they post their job, they usually require a certain amount of experience. And sometimes military uh, personnel that transitioning, they actually have the experience like through the military, but they don't really have like experience or college that the company might ask. So how do you guys go about that problems? Because you got qualified soldiers that come in out, like they see the job, they know they qualify for it, but they don't meet the college requirements or either they're working on the degree. They could be a few months away, like, which is my case, or the company asks like, for instance, eight years of experience on that particular uh, field, but somebody is qualified and loaded with military experience. So how do you guys go about that when you guys are in? Depends on the position. Really, it really does. Uh, Tom said it depends on the position if you can, if you heard him. But um, one of the things I've seen specifically is um, a, a lot of us, and you know, I think different than what I've seen in Novellus is if you bring the experience to the table, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say the degree doesn't matter. It does um, sometimes, um, but you know, for us, experience is key. I mean, if you bring the experience to the table and don't have the degree or you're close to the degree, and, you know, there's degree assistance programs or, I mean, I finished my degree uh, with the company's help. I mean, that I, I, was, a, I was a semester away uh, when I joined, uh, joined the company, kind of talked to them, said, hey, this is the deal. They understood what I brought to the table. And, you know, they ended up helping me get my degree and complete it. So there's a great opportunity. And I will say 100%. The one thing, one piece of advice I, I give my kids, it, you're not going to check all the boxes ever. You know, when you see those, you see those requirements, don't assume you have to check them all. Uh, if you feel like you're qualified for the, for the role and you feel like you check most of the boxes and can bring you know, you can do the job, apply for the role, have, make somebody tell you, make, make them tell you no, right? Because, you know, if you don't apply, you can't get it. You, you're not going to get it. Yeah, that's and, true. And I would say, um, you know, challenge, challenge the, uh, challenge the employer when you, when you're meeting with them and say, Hey, here's what I bring to the table. Here's how it translates. Here's the experience I have. I don't maybe don't check all the boxes, but this is what I bring to the table. And 100%, uh, you know, you've got to apply. You feel like you can do the job, you do it. I tell my kids that, you know, I got a, I got a 30 year old daughter, and a 28 year old daughter. I tell them that all the time. You're never going to check all the boxes. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Keenan, you got your hand up. Muted. There we go. There we go. I've got I've got two different mute buttons. I got to push here. Um, hi. So uh, I I had a pair of questions I wanted to go into here. 
Um, the first had to do with um, the number of different roles in Novellus that um, that we could apply to. This program obviously is really focused around um, manufacturing, and therefore maintenance technicians are are the most frequent um, roles that uh, get bounced around out here. But um, what what other positions would be available? Uh, specifically for people with degrees. Um, I know that you are connected with a lot of very high-end um, uh, manufacturers and suppliers and distrib- uh, distribution. I was also wondering if there were any roles within your company that would benefit from or require a security clearance if it's going into something like aerospace industry. Definitely. There's, uh, you know, I think we're, uh, we are a defense contractor. Uh, especially on the aerospace side. Uh, I believe that's mainly out of Europe, but uh, from a security clearance standpoint, I think there's lots of opportunity. Um, Hmm. And like I said, even on the market marketing side, you know, there's a lot of things that you have to, you know, have to know or have clearances for. So I think there's opportunity there. Um, Obviously there are all, all kinds of roles. I mean, Wise, I mean, everything from operators all the way up through, uh, you know, leadership, leadership roles. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Austin, go ahead. You guys hear me? Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently for your transition if you could go back? I, I think, I, you know, the, the main thing, the one thing that I would do differently is really, I, I, I let my career happen to me. Um, take charge of it. You know, it is your career. It's your life. Um, I, early on in my career, I let it happen to me. And that's, you know, there is a difference in how, you, how, how that approach takes you. Uh, but make, make it your career. Own it. Um, you want developed, you need development, you ask for it, you take charge of your career. And I, that's the one thing I would do differently today versus what I, what I've done. Awesome. Thank you very much. Jason, go ahead. Hey, you hear me? Got me. All right. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Um, My question is when you apply, I applied for a job at Novellus a week ago at the Oswego plant. So when you um, apply, does it go directly to the HR in Columbus or does it go to the plant? How does that process work? Goes to plant specific. Yeah, it should go to the plant specific and Tom uh, made made, made made that a little better. I think uh, the one one thing I will say is uh, usually there's a talent acquisition network uh, that will feed to the plant. And I, and I know Oswego specifically has, has their own talent act, uh, group in, in house. So it should go directly to the plant. Okay. Right. And I would I say, just... I would say, if you haven't heard anything, follow up. Reach well, out. That, then I was just, I'd have to look in to see who it was. I just received, you know, an email from them, yeah. but, uh, no. Okay. I, that's what I really wanted to see. And then another question is, um, for you guys, continuous improvement? Because I didn't see CI on there. I saw operations and value it's stream. There. Are you guys, do you guys have a specific CI department or is each section doing their own? Um, how's that working for you guys? No, great, great question. I, I'm, 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 a CI, I'm, I'm a CI guy, so that's why I'm uh, asking. Great question because I'm sitting here in a hotel room. Um, we're in a co- hotel conference room. We've been sp- spending the week doing CI. Uh, put, put if you guys have any CI positions open, let me know too. I'll apply. There, there's a ton. Okay. I was, yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, no, uh, so we do have CI roles. Uh, each plant typically has a CI leader and a CI group. Um, sometimes there's multiple ones in specific plants. So like, uh, you know, Oswego, I have, they'll have a main plant CI group and then they'll have support groups within each business unit. So uh, like Oswego has four business units they run and they have a separate group for each each business unit. 
uh, depending on the size of facility, like my facility is smaller. I've only got, I've got, I've got a small team, but uh, you know, definitely a CI focus. Uh, one of the, one of the things, just traditional CI, whether it's Six Sigma, Six Sigma Lean, um, <laughs> you know, even on one of the, the one I'm learning about is uh, world-class manufacturing. So different, uh, different approaches, but all the same tool sets. Mm -hmm. But definitely yeah. follow up with the plan yeah. on your application. Yeah. And Jason, I'm going to remind you, I know you've been out of the HEROES program for a little while, but don't forget that all of us program managers still have your back too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're always happy to help connect you to where and, we can. And I wanted to say something to the group since I'm on here. Uh, when I finished, I took, a, I took jobs on the line, working the line, even though I had a degree clearance, everything, just to get manufacturing experience. And that was how I got into continuous improvement and getting my Six Sigma green belt and black belt. But it, it, it won't hurt to take a job on the line just to get some of that experience and see how it works. So thanks. Yeah, we're glad to see you back too. So let us know what we can do. All right. Josh, I see your hand up there. Hey, Chris, can you hear me? I got you. Hey, so this is kind of a, a question about resumes coming from transitioning, getting that verbiage correct to suit the civilian side. What are your recommendations on that? Is it like get it as good as we can and then build on it in the interview or does it need to be spot on when we submit? I'll give you my view. I'll let Tom kind of give you his. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm using the same, same resume format I put together in my transition program uh, back in 93. So that, if that tells you something, <laughs> I mean, basically it's got, it's got to deliver um, what you bring to the table. And I think as long as it does that, this, you know, the fancy formats and all that, I mean, as a hiring manager, I, you know, there's things I look for. I, I'm more looking at content than what, you know, the fancy paper and all that stuff and different formats. But, um, you know, really it's the content and being specific about what, what experience you have and what you've done, um, you know, what are the what are the deliverables that you brought to the table? I think those are the things that really uh, what are the what's the value you've added? Uh, those are the things I want to see as a hiring manager. Tom can talk more. I think you know maybe on format and stuff like that. But um, I'm I'm really you know as a hiring manager when I'm looking at them, I'm I'm looking at content. I want to know what the deliverables are. I want to know what what value you've added in, in your previous roles and what you're bringing to the table. The only things I would add to that is tailor your, your resume to a specific position, bringing out the experience that you have and how it fits into what you're applying for. If it's an automation engineer or something, what you did in the military that relates to that and make that one of your highlights. The other thing I'd say is make sure your resume is readable. By that, I mean, you don't want six point font on your resume. I've seen some of those come through. When you get an old guy like me looking at them, it makes it really tough. So you got to, uh, I, I think those are the two things. Chris hit most of them, but everybody doesn't understand what you did in the military. So you have to kind of point it out to them. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's just, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, and he brings that point up is translation, understanding how to translate uh, into the private sector. I mean, it's not, it's, I, I don't know. It's sometimes difficult, but not, uh, really trying to communicate that translation on what, what you bring to the table uh, from a private, private sector standpoint and, you know, focus on that. And I think that's, that's the hard part that especially uh, people that weren't, aren't veterans, um, you know, as a veteran, I have different perspectives. So I understand um, there's things that I translate myself, uh, non-veterans, you know, you got to, I, I don't want to say this, but uh, maybe I'm going below the line, but, you know, make sure you're speaking to the lowest common denominator in relation to that is, uh, you know, making sure people understand how to translate it. 
and you know focus on that. And I just want to add when I work with service members, you know, to try to help translate that military experience, right? I'm an active duty military spouse. So I get some of it. I don't get all of it. But one of the most fun things that I do is play stupid. So I'll ask the why. Well, what did you do that for? Why did you do this? And so think through your day to day job in that sense. Like if you're talking to somebody, or find somebody to talk to that really doesn't understand the military or what you do um, and say things to them and see if you can make them understand it. And that will help you kind of translate it to get it onto your resume too. So, but there's all kinds of resources out there to help. We're happy to help connect you with those too. Shannon, you've so patiently had your hand up for so long. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, this was just kind of a question about your uh, company as far as like, you know, you recycle. So I was just wondering what your impacts were as far as uh, the environment goes, uh, kind of your numbers about like the reduction of possibly like on landfills or what your like carbon footprint. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, if you go and, you know, I, I know we've made some 2050 uh, commitments uh, to be net carbon uh, I think carbon zero in Leia, you can probably uh, give me more, uh, speak more to that. But uh, we've got, you know, part of our focus five is focus on energy reduction with the inner energy, energy intensity. Uh, one of the things we focus on is uh, uh, recycle content. Obviously, big, big opportunity for us is, uh, you know, I think we the my supplier. So one of the mills that supply me is up their green cycle cert green circle certified so they're in uh their recycle contents up over the 90 percent mark um and a lot of our facilities are like that um on the can side and i i know you know like brazil there's almost like a hundred percent recycle content into what they're going in you know what's going on into their mills uh, the u.s has a lot to work to do a lot of work to do on the recycle side and and, and we're even active in helping move that along. There's a lot of innovation uh, that we're working on to push recycle content or recycling in North America, make it easy, make it, make it part of what we do, making sure we're educating uh, the public on what, you know, what it means to recycle. You know, I think uh, it takes 10 times less, less energy for a pound of aluminum that's recycled versus making it new. So uh, that's where there's a real focus on recycling. And, you know, as the world's largest re aluminum recycler, you know, we, we want to make sure people know that and know what we're about, who we are, and why that's important to us. And, you know, having that net carbon zero footprint is, uh, you know, aspirational. We don't know how we're going to get there. We've got a, some pretty good plans on getting there, and we've got stepwise uh, roadmap to get there but some of it's still to be defined. And I can add to that too. Hi everyone, I'm Leah Sherman. I'm on the Novellus North America communications team. Um, so you might see I dropped in the chat uh, a link to the our sustainability commitments page. So we have some goals for 2026 concerning a 10% reduction in energy, a 10% reduction in water and a 20% reduction in waste. So that's all our goal for 2026. And then as Chris mentioned, we have some goals for 2050 to be net carbon neutral um, and to achieve a 30% reduction in our CO2 footprint. Um, you know, we're also really focused on the consumer behavior side of it. It's really great that a lot of companies are looking to use more aluminum, but when it doesn't come back to us to be recycled, it ends up, you know, if it ends up in a landfill, it's like a net loss for everybody. So we're even looking at some new creative partnerships to complete the, the loop of closed loop recycling. Um, so I can say, you know, even in Atlanta here, we've partnered with State Farm Arena, uh, where the Atlanta Hawks play our basketball team. Um, and we switched the venue over to our Ball Aluminum Cups. Ball is one of our customers. We sell them the aluminum and they make cups and cans. Um, through that partnership, we've diverted like 12,000 pounds of aluminum from a landfill just in the last uh, little under a year. So really working on being a sustainability leader in all of the communities where we operate, 
um, you know, we have partnerships with Habitat for Humanity where we will work with them to collect cans and the value of that recycled metal will be put toward um, building a new home in the community. So we really, really care about sustainability in terms of are we operating sustainably? Are we, you know, partnering in our community sustainably? Are we, are we being the neighbor that our uh, communities want us to be? Awesome. And even on, and to further kind of note on that, I mean, we've got, we're, you know, as I said, we're in a, we're in a, uh, I'm finishing up a CI event, looking at strategy. And one of the, one of the items we we're talking about just for our, my plan is, you know, I've got, you know, lots of, lots of roof space, uh, you know, for solar, we're looking at alternative energy opportunities, um, you know, definitely recycling cup opportunities being active in the communities that we live in and making sure our public and our partners that are local to us are we're educating them they're educating us and we're working together to uh you know chris create that sustainable world richard go ahead. hey guys how are you can you hear me okay thank you. yeah i hope is the hope is the appropriate time to jump in um, coming from a talent attraction um, uh, world, right now uh, I'm a, a talent attraction business partner with Kraft Heinz, and I heard people mention uh, several things that I wanted to share with you. Is um, like Chris was saying, the military language and the language um, that some of the you know maybe HR people and uh, hiring managers are accustomed to, sometimes it doesn't match. So as he was saying, you won't always check, have all the boxes checked. It's true. But I, one of the things that I try to do with my partners is let them know that, you know, if, even if we don't have all the boxes checked, we want to get people who got three and a half boxes checked, four boxes checked, because we want to meet them where they are. And I think was, because I work a lot with um, Wounded Warriors Project. And our main thing is we want to be able to hire six to 10% of that representation in the field and a lot of them are, uh, I wouldn't say afraid, but intimidated because they do come from this, this vast safety network where it's a brotherhood and they don't have that same connection when you get into the uh, for-profit and non-profit world. Um, and and um, it's, it's very intimidating. But what I can say is most of the stuff that you have as military uh, veterans is, is transferable. You, you may not see it because you don't know it, but usually if you have a talent attraction um, person advocating for you, it's our voice to have that conversation and share your story with that HR person because it is intimidating when, you know, you speak a certain language from the military and they don't get it and they might overlook you. But we really, really try to advocate for those veterans because we know how tough it is because what you have, what you have earned in the military is, is, is valuable in our world. It's just a, discon it's a, it's, it's a disconnection in terms of how it's communicated. So one thing that I'm recognizing right now is writing a resume is a real uh, skill set. I talk to people who don't have great resumes. I look at their resumes and I talk to them like, oh my God, what I'm hearing is not represented on that resume. So one of the things that I'm going to encourage you guys to do is talk about what you bring to the table, because people are interested in uh, the value that you bring to the table. And if and if, and if they if they're really really interested in you, they'll ask you the right questions, and then that's where you can sell yourself. So I just wanted to jump in and let you guys know most of the most of the questions that you have as far as your talent is very transferable. Unfortunately, sometimes we have people in the field that think they know what they want until they truly have an opportunity to get to talk to you, and then once they start talking to you. You'll, be, you'll just mesmerize them on all the talent that you have. So I'm going to just say, you know what? Don't worry about checking all the boxes. Put your name in the hat. Uh, roll the dice. It's going to be 50-50 yes or no, but you will get more. You'll get, you'll get a yes, but you got to continue just believing in yourself. So I just wanted to add that because I do come from the world. I, come from, I am coming from the world of talent attraction, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing now salary and hourly, and I just keep telling people, keep applying the pressure, keep applying for jobs that you think that you're qualified for. 
Thanks, Richard. Great advice. I, I just on on that note, one of the, one of my friends, I was in the, you know when I was in the military, he was an EOD technician. Great problem solver. You know what I need? Problem solvers. The world needs problem solvers. <laughs> all right. Well, we are at our time. We've had lots of great questions today. Thank you all for um, posing those to our group. So up on your screen, you should see some next steps as well as a feedback poll. So if you'll take a few minutes, actually it should take a few seconds to respond to the, the poll. There's three questions. So if you'll scroll down to make sure you hit all three of those, please. And then on our next step slide, you do have the Novellus career link there. Go check out their site, look for locations, look for specific roles. Um, and one thing I'll remind you, you know, we talked about this and, and Chris hit on it earlier. Um, an operator at Novellus is not the same as an operator at many other sites. And I always want you to keep in, that in mind is, um, you know, that tends to be one of their more entry level roles. But in this case, that is not entry level like um, unskilled, if you will. So, um, and uh, like Jason mentioned earlier, don't be afraid to get your foot in the door, get out on the line and, and learn the company, learn the culture, learn the equipment, and you will be amazed at how quickly you can progress up into uh, your next position. So thank you all for that great advice today. Uh, connect on LinkedIn. Lauren dropped in the chat earlier LinkedIn profile links for um, each of our folks from Novellus today. Connect with our team at the Heroes team as well. Um, and then these events are all about education in the roles and careers available in modern manufacturing. So we will have another event next Wednesday. We'll be speaking to Arconic. Feel free to share the invitations out as you get those. Um, we want the greater military community to really benefit and to cross over into careers in manufacturing. So um, with that, any final words from Novellus? No, just thanks for the opportunity to get to tell you about Novellus and uh, great to meet everybody. You know, appreciate your time. It really means a lot. And my final word is if you do decide to apply, reach out to a Heroes Make America program manager. We will make sure that we connect you with somebody um, over in Novellus for that. So thank you, um, Chris, Tom, Leah, for your time today uh, and all of your insight that you were able to share. We hope that some of you will consider and look forward to seeing you on the next event or in the near future. Everyone have a great day. Thanks, Jen.